Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie, your intuitive reader. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Based on what you guys voted for in the polls, we are going to be doing the pick a card reading on which animal guide has a message for you. So before we get started, I do want to let you guys know that if you are interested in a personal reading, the link to my Etsy is down below. I also sell crystals, guided meditation, decks, artwork, etc. And uh, of course, it would help me out so much if you hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. I have a regular upload schedule of Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I have three piles here in front of me, um, or I should say a card. There's only one card. And uh, we are actually doing the animals from the Druid Animal Oracle. So we have three piles, pile one, two, and three, pile one is a cute little pink aragonite point. Pile two is a blue chalcedony point. And pile three is what is called a cotton candy point, cotton candy quartz. So go ahead and take as much time as you need and we're gonna go ahead and get started with pile number one. So let me go ahead and move some of this out of the way. All right, if you chose a pile number one with this cute little pink aragonite point, this is your animal guide or the animal guide that has a message for you right at this time. So let's see what it is. Okay, beautiful. So let me get that focus for you guys. This is the adder, which is a type of snake, okay? So uh, with the snake, with the adder, we're really focusing on transformation, healing, and really shedding what is no longer needed in our lives. So remember that as we are healing, as we are transforming, which again, we do this on a daily basis, we ascend, but we also descend, we do both equally. And as we change and as our vibration changes, there are going to be things that no longer align to you. Belief systems, relationships, goals, passions, career, uh, career interests, hobbies, you name it. And it is in this time in which it is normal and it is necessary for you to shed those things. Because when we shed things that no longer align to us, when we shed old energies, we make room for new ones. Now, it's something that I talk about a lot on this channel, but it's important to realize that as we move into new energies, at one point, they are going to be old energies too. So it's important to always have this mindset of, you know, things are born, they die, and they are reborn. Remember, things don't really die. They instead, they transform, right? Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Rather, it's just transformed, okay? And so in that regard, know that do you don't don't fear do not fear the shedding of your skin because i do think pile number one you are going to deal with a lot of shedding uh you might have dealt with it recently you might be dealing with it now or you might be very soon dealing with it or maybe a combination of the three but i want you to remember and this is so important to just let go of things that no longer serve you allow the skin to go Allow the skin to be shed because there is new skin underneath, correct? There is. I promise you there is. Now, of course, in this particular deck as well, the snake does have a lot to do with healing. And so what's interesting is each of these, uh, a lot of these animals in uh, this pick a card have to do with healing, so as a human collective, we are really all dealing with healing and change. And that's a message that comes through for me in a lot, a lot, a lot of my readings, uh, a lot of my personal channelings. We have to be able to accept change and to accept the idea of death, okay? And when I mean death, I'm not really relating to physical death, more so death of ideas, concepts, etc. 
Okay, so we're also going to pull some oracle to get any more messages that come through for pile number one here. These are any other messages. We're going to pull two cards. Okay, we do have the second house with assets. And let me pull, pull one more. Okay, two more. We'll take two. We'll take two. Okay, we also have the 11th house with edge. Uh-huh. And Uranus with revolution. Okay. So let me kind of adjust this differently. So you can you can see your your snake, your adder. Okay. So if we're talking about where the change, where the transformation is going to take place, it appears it's going to take place most likely in your relationships and your physical life, such as your job, such as finance, home life. Um, I think, of course, you are changing in the spiritual realm as well. You always are. But there is a big focus pile number one on possibly changing what you do for a living for some of you, changing uh, hobbies that you're interested in, uh, different, uh, you know, changing, uh, seeing different financial, possibly financial gain or maybe financial loss. Uh, and also, it looks like you're attracting new relationships, in particular friendships for the majority of you. So uh, I want you to be aware of that too. I want you to uh, think, be, be aware of the, the numbers 1111 and 222, okay? But th this is the message that the snake is giving you. Also, with the Uranus Revolution card, that's, that's exactly like, yes, it's a breakthrough. It's time for a breakthrough. And when there's a breakthrough of energies like this, when we're purging energies, when we're transforming, by no means is this an easy process. So take care of yourself, pile number one. Take care of yourself during this time. Meaning, you know, make sure you're getting adequate sleep. Make sure you are uh, taking time to relax in general, not to just work, 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 relax. And um, also to, to get some, you know, some nice food and uh, just take a little bit more time for yourself right now because there is a lot of change I do think that is coming. And of course, that is not to instill fear, but rather it is awareness and it's not a negative thing. I don't see anything really negative about this at all. This all seems very positive and it seems necessary. So that is the message I have for you. Your guide that came through today is the adder, is the snake. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. All right, if you chose pile number two, this is the beautiful blue chalcedony point. We are going to see what particular animal spirit guide has a message for you at this moment. So, oh, so cute. I love frogs. So we have the frog. Look at that. The frog. So, okay, with the frog, we are actually, with this message, we're looking at the fact that a frog is an amphibian. The fact the frog lives, can live on the land, but also lives on the water, in the water. And so with that, it's, it's bringing me to the point of the physical, which is the earth, the land, and the emotional, which is the water. And so I do think right now, pile two, I want you to really pay attention to your emotional health and your physical health, but I think that there are times now in which the emotional and physical bond between the two is heightened, meaning that uh, if you are struggling emotionally, you're going to want to really take time to pay attention to that, to, to feel that, and we're going to get into that, because it may have a, a, a physical repercussion. And we all know from a scientific standpoint that that is true, right? If we are feeling very anxious, we can get upset stomach, you know, or we can get headaches. We can we can physically feel sick from our mental bodies. Um, but for you, in particular, Pile 2, it's going to be heightened right now. So what I mean by that is I want you to really, really pay attention to your mental and emotional well-being. 
because there's this element of water and the element of water has a lot to do with going with the flow. And also, again, with the emotional body, but also with healing. Each of these piles has to do with healing today to a certain extent. For you, I think it's mainly emotional healing. I think that you have been through a lot in the past and maybe even recently, and it's time to address the emotional trauma or the emotional wounds that you have had. Now, when I talk about addressing, again, this is really just looking. It is just visiting the past uh, because, you know, what I said 10 seconds ago is the past, right? So if earlier in the day you're feeling very emotionally drained, that's still the past, right? Um, and when I talk about addressing, this is, this is for a short time, meaning that we look at the the emotion we feel the emotion i like to think of it as a wave which is going with the water again think of a wave and a wave there's the crest of the wave the, the highest point of the wave that is where you fully feel the emotion but then the wave falls the wave climbs the wave falls so that's how you should be feeling your emotions now and always whether they be positive or whether they be more negative emotions for for a lot of you i think that there is probably some sadness or some anxiety or uh maybe some anger you know fear I'm feeling that's on a collective level as well right now. So don't feel bad about that. Um, maybe even a little like uh, apathy. I want you to not shy away from that emotion. The frog does not want you to shy away from that emotion. The frog wants you to feel that emotion. But feel it like a wave. And then let it go. And then let it go. Because the issue again, and I talk about this a lot with humans in particular, with emotions, is that we cling on to emotions and instead of experiencing them for, you know, a, a short while, we choose to relive an emotion over and over and over and over. But the emotion is usually tied to an event, a person, a particular trauma, right? Something like that. And so what I what I um, suggest you guys do, pile two, is I suggest you maybe journal or go into meditation, whatever works for you, and just say, okay, check in with yourself. How am I feeling at this moment? And how have I been feeling? If it's positive, great. If it's positive, still feel the positive emotions. Like if you've been feeling really happy recently, Feel really happy, but you can't feel really happy without feeling sad too. And I know that sounds very counterintuitive and crazy maybe, but again, my guys that I've channeled, especially from the Arcturians, they tell me, you know, we live in a very polar uh, planet, a very, um, there's a lot of duality. And so with that, there is going to be sadness in your life, but there's also happiness. There has to be one and the other. If there's more than one, we create an imbalance, but we want, we have to have both. Also though, when we're talking about the frog, we're looking at having, I, I like this image because it's, it's so cute though. Anybody else love frogs? I just think they're so cute. Some people are like, you know, some people are like, oh, frogs are ugly. I'm like, how? Dude, they're cute as heck. But anyway, Notice that little froggy guy there. He's got one foot in the water and he's got one foot in the on the land. And so to me, that's also the saying that I like to live by, which I don't even remember where I heard it. It was a while ago, but I heard it somewhere. And it said, keep one foot in the physical and one foot in the spiritual at all times. Because I do see, you know, a lot of people... Um, on the YouTube community and everywhere in our world where they're so consumed by the physical or they're so consumed by the spiritual. That's not what we want. The key to happiness too is neutrality. We don't have to choose sides. That's what, you know, our, 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 our um, society tries to make us feel. They try to make us feel like we have to identify with a label. We have to be male. We have to be female. We have to be, uh, pro v we have to be anti v we have you know what i mean um so make sure that you're looking at everything in life in a neutral viewpoint you're looking at both sides and then maybe choose maybe you go towards a little bit more one side but you don't have to fully go right 
So when it comes to the physical, make sure you're you're still living in the physical. You're still aware of what's happening in the physical realm. Um, to a certain degree, you're not so just thinking about, okay, what's happening on other planets? What's happening, um, you know, with my starseed family? Because that's important, but you don't want to just completely be in that. But on the flip side, right, you don't want to be like, okay, uh, on autopilot, you don't want to be like, uh, for instance, Elizabeth April, she'll call it autopilot in the 3D where we're like work, um, you know, money, uh, you're just focusing on that. We want to find a balance between the two. And that's a really important message for you guys as well. So let's go ahead and pull some uh, Oracle quick and we'll see what else comes through for you from the frog. Okay. Oh, I love it. Sun being. I love it. The sun, the sun. If you guys haven't watched about my um, video from the Galactic Federation of Light, I do talk a lot about what's happening with the sun, solar flares, things like that. But that's beside the point at the moment. Uh, the the sun, let's look at your other cards too. Yes, semi-sextile with allowing. And then also Jupiter with expansion. Wow, lots of beautiful energies here. So uh, the frog also wants to remind you of this life force essence energy. That's what the sun is. And I, I really do like this, this imagery. And I didn't realize that when I first got the deck years ago, a couple of years ago. But look at this, the, the sun is a yoke. The sun is coming out of the eggshell. It's cracking out. And the yolk right of the egg provides all the nutrients and everything like that. And so the sun is providing us a lot of information right now. But if we're, if we're just focusing on the aspect of the sun being the being, the sun being the light within us, there's a lot having to do with your life force energy. Because I do think that for some of you, your life force energy might be... Um, being drained because we're not doing what I talked about before. We're not necessarily feeling the emotions like a wave or, or, and, or we're not putting one foot in the physical and one foot in the spiritual. There might be too much in the spiritual or too much in the physical, um, but that's an important message. But we also have semi-sextile allowing, this is allowing yourself to feel the emotions. Um, that's something that you'll find Maybe some other spiritual teachers uh, fail to convey or convey differently. And I think I think it's just a matter of conveying it. Uh, some people try to think like, okay, let's focus on positivity, 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 and we'll be happy. And that's not true to me anyway. It's, it's important to allow yourself to feel sad, to allow yourself to feel hate, fear, all of these things. But again, like the wave. And then with Jupiter with expansion, yes, this is causing a lot of expansion for you right now. Uh, pile two, you're going through a lot of change and make sure that as you're going through that change, again, you're allowing yourself to experience that change. You're allowing yourself to let things go that no longer serve you, going with the flow with life, seeing where the day unfolds, but also finding a balance between uh, letting life happen to you and you happening to life. Because in reality, Life doesn't ever happen to you. You have the power. You have the key. And speaking of power, also I remember in this particular deck, the frog deals with our own personal power. So that is what I have. Those are the messages for the frog pile number two. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Whoops, I forgot the point there. All right, so this is pile number three with this cute little cotton candy uh, colored uh, point. We are going to see which animal guide has a message for you today at this particular moment. Oh, I love it. That is the raven. Look how beautiful, magnificent. Oh, I love the the whole idea of the, the, the raven. So automatically, you know, when I think of the raven too, we're looking at the psychic abilities. We're looking at intuitive abilities. We're looking at a messenger between worlds. So, you know, Halloween just passed, Samhain, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the veil was very thin. 
Uh, and I, I think that the veil continues to be, I always think the veil is quite thin this time of year, at least uh, in the where I am in the, in the winter, fall, winter time. But nonetheless, I think in particular pile three, there is a lot happening and uh, that con will continue to happen regarding your intuitive and psychic abilities. And you might think, oh my God, I'm not psychic. Again, yes, you are. We are all psychic. Every single one of us is psychic, or I should say has the potential to be psychic, but many people don't even believe in this, or many people think that they would not be good enough or they don't have that. And then so these abilities do not become what they have the... Uh, ability to become. Now, I, I give this example a lot too, but to me, our psychic abilities, which you could kind of equate to intuition, this is like a muscle, okay? And so like, let's say, you know, you got a muscle, your arm muscle, I don't know, any muscle, and you're trying to work it out. Well, you know, at first, if you don't, if you don't work out your muscle, it will in a way, the muscle fibers will become not as strong, right? And uh, if you do use your muscle, they will become thicker and they will become stronger. And this is another important point to make is that when you do, like, let's say you're doing an arm workout and you work your arm out and it's kind of, ooh, it hurts, right? And then maybe the next day, even your arm is sore. Well, it's sore because, right, you broke the muscle fibers and now they're growing back stronger, Meaning maybe you're not, you're not going to feel physically sore with your intuition, but you might feel kind of drained or you might feel like it's difficult. Well, that's because usually, right, uh, growth does not happen with some sort of uncomfortableness, okay? And I have found that. So, you know, don't expect to sit down and meditate and you're like, holy shit, excuse my language, <laughs> holy crap, you know, you see all of these, like you got, wow, you got these clairvoyant abilities and you see this and you see that, like that can happen, but that does, doesn't have to happen and it doesn't make you any less wrong and it doesn't make you any less like uh, bad too because uh, we all are gifted, but we all have different ways of being gifted. Some people are more clairvoyant some more clairsentient, some more claircognizant, etc. But nonetheless, I want you guys to really focus on your intuitive abilities, continue to focus on them. Uh, you can, of course, look at, excuse me, outside sources, as in you can look at YouTube videos, uh, or, you know, you can also read books on it. But while that is a great tool, the main tool, right, is your own perception because you yourself are going to learn the most about your intuitive abilities personally because you might think, okay, this person does this. It might not match you at all, okay? And so I also want you to pay super close attention to repeating numbers right now and also, um, or even just a particular sequence of numbers, particular symbols, imagery that may appear in dreams, that may appear in your waking hours, that may appear also in meditation. And I'd like you to really journal those, write those down. What does that mean to you? Also, you know, if you do want to... Um, have some contact with, you know, I mean, really it, it, this guide, but maybe a god or a goddess or maybe a um, any type of spirit guide, whether that be an angel, an uh, interdimensional being, you know, whatever that may be. If you want to have contact, now is probably the best time. I feel the energies are very great for that at the moment. But again, when you do do any type of contact or if you try to access the Akashic Records or, you know, the list can go on and on, please don't be discouraged if you don't see the results that you want to see right away. Because again, think of intuition and psychic abilities like a muscle. Just always think of that. Remember, a muscle. You can't get, you know, a six pack overnight. Heck no. You got to spend a lot of time with that, right? You got to spend a lot of time with that, okay? I wouldn't know. I do not have a six pack, but you know what I mean. I can imagine you would have to spend a lot of time with that. So let's see what else we have right here from the Raven. But the Raven is a, is a beautiful, beautiful message here. 
Ooh, yeah, Cancer the doula. So there is a lot with the emotional body. You know, this is interesting. Uh, pile two had a lot with the emotional body and pile one did as well. Everybody's kind of dealing with their emotions right now. Um, but there's a lot of divine feminine energy here. Okay, interesting. Pile one got the same card. The second house with assets. Okay. So I think right now, too, for a, actually a majority of you, you're going to want to use your intuitive abilities to look at the physical. Meaning, I think that there's a need to tap into your higher self's perspective regarding something of the physical. When I say physical material, this could be finance, this could be your career, your job, your hobby, school, your home. Something in the physical realm, uh, I think, is in need of addressing, possibly in need of change. Oh, remember when I said repeating numbers? Look at 222. That, that number's been coming up for me a lot, too, recently, which is interesting because that changes. Because a few months ago, it was always 444. Four, four, now it's 222. Um, but anyways, maybe look up what that number. And the thing is with 222 and those numbers, remember, you can look up, oh, what does 222 mean? And, you know, you can have these things come up. But notice how you're feeling, you in particular, when when 222 comes up. What are you feeling? What are you thinking about? What are you doing? Because you yourself have sent you those numbers or particular beings have sent you those numbers, okay, at that time to reinforce a particular feeling idea, right? as a sign. But I do think that there there is a need again for healing. Interesting is all three of the animals that we have come through had an aspect of healing. I think that there is a need to to go inward. There's a lot about it kind of like the spirit card in the um spirit card, what the heck? The uh, hermit card in the tarot, it's about going inward, a spiritual journey, okay? Um, because, you know, I, I think too, yes, receptive, intuitive, I'm looking at that cancer card, those key words, there is a lot to do with the divine feminine and to honor the divine feminine within, remember you have the divine feminine and masculine has nothing to do with gender, but the feminine has a lot more to do with creativity and intuition. Um, also, of course, I think because I mentioned creativity, I think it'd be a great time to use the messages that you do get and make be make them in a creative project. Maybe that means writing poetry, a book. Maybe that means painting, cooking, dancing, singing, right? The list goes on and on. But uh, I want you to really pay attention to these messages right now, pile three, see what they are saying. And of course, you know, this, this guide is uh, coming through to tell you uh, very um, in a broad sense, but those particular messages about your intuition too are going to be very personal and they're going to come through. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this reading pile number three. You have the raven reminding you again about your intuitive abilities and to not to not feel discouraged. Remember like a muscle. Okay, remember that. So I go, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys next time in the next video. Bye bye. Thanks so much.